There's a lot of talk about the rapture right now because we're coming up on the high holy days of the fall, the scriptural feast days. And I've written about those things and I've done some videos about those things. A lot of people think that the rapture will happen on Yom Teruah or the Feast of Trumpets. I'm not going to set dates, but I do I do keep an eye out uh, for that holiday. I look forward to it every year, and I have for a long time. A lot of Christians do. But there's a lot of talk about the rapture right now, and it's not just because the fall feasts are coming up, the high holy days of the Jewish calendar. A lot of people look for the rapture on the Feast of Trumpets, or Yom Teruah, and there are several reasons for that, and I've written about them and done videos on them, so I won't go into that. And I'm not going to set dates. There are a lot of things happening this year, signs in the sun, moon, and stars, and I find them significant, so I am looking a little bit closer than I normally do at Yom Teruah and the rapture. But I'm frequently told that there is no rapture, and so I've written extensively about the scriptural evidence for the rapture. And I'm going to include a link to my blog and one of those articles that I've written. You'll find that in the description. But the rapture is also found encoded in different places in the Hebrew Old Testament. And if you know anything about my videos and my writing, I have been studying the Bible codes, and I'm a Bible codes researcher, and I've been doing that for about 25 years now. So I want to look at one of those codes today, and the odds of this particular code are at least 1 in 1,000, which would make it statistically significant. Now, as always with statistics, I ask ChatGPT to help me with that. I'm not a statistician. My only claim to mathematical fame is that I used to tutor in algebra, but I searched for the Hebrew equivalent of the English word rapture, and that was inspired by an old video that the late Yaakov Ramsel did about a code in Malachi 3, verses 16 through 18. And he stated he had found the phrase rapture of his people in those verses in Malachi, and many consider that passage to be an Old Testament reference to the rapture, and I'm one of them. So here are those verses. Then they that feared the Lord spoke often one to another, and the Lord listened and heard it. And a book of remembrance was written before him of those that feared the Lord and thought upon his name. They shall be mine, says the Lord of hosts, in that day when I make up my jewels, and I will spare them as a man spares his own son that serves him. Then shall you return and discern between the righteous and the wicked, between him that serves God and him that serves him not. Here is a photo I took of my search. I use Bible Codes 2000 software, and it can only be ran on an older operating system. Now, my operating system on that particular computer is Windows XP, and it does not connect to the Internet. So I had to take a photograph of it with my camera, but unfortunately it is not very clear. I'll try to take a clearer one tomorrow and post it on my blog. So if you'd like to see something clearer, you can check and see tomorrow, or check and see after you watch this, and maybe there'll be a clearer image on my blog at that point. But here are the words I searched for, and it was an a priori search. And this is what I found. I found Netzal, which is the Hebrew equivalent of the English word rapture, and the Greek word harpazo. Now, here's the Strong's breakdown of Netzal, and... Its definition is to strip, plunder, deliver oneself, be delivered, snatch away, deliver. And if you know anything about Harpazo, uh, you know that that is the same meaning, that has the same meaning. So Nutzal and Harpazo and Rapture are all synonymous. But Nutzal was my primary search term, and I also found the name of Jesus one time in the code, and I found the word people which was basically nations, and the phrase with him. So Jesus, rapture, and people with him were found alongside of Netzal. So here's the question that I asked ChatGPT. 
My null hypothesis is that codes found in a small body of text are a result of random chance and not statistically significant. My text size was 112 characters without spaces. My maximum skip was 92. I did an a priori search looking for a word that is three characters long in Hebrew. It occurred twice in the text, and my software's odds calculator listed the odds as 1 in 30 with a standard deviation of 2.05. The expected occurrence was 0 0.5. The smallest result was at a skip of 23, and I considered it the most significant of the two because of its low, skips, uh, its low skip interval. I was also looking for two other terms that were related and formed a small phrase. One of the words was three characters long in Hebrew, and it occurred 23 times. The other words were four characters long in Hebrew, and each occurred once. All of these were in close proximity, and some of them shared the same letters as my target word. Can you help me determine a p-value with this information? And note, I forgot to include the third word initially and had to ask for it later. And it does change the odds. So, ChatGPT said we can approach this systematically by evaluating the probabilities of each event and then combining them and here's how we can break it down. And then it went over the first word and the odds of that, and it went over the second word and the odds there, and the third word with four characters. And it gave me a p-value, an initial p-value there of 0 0.0333. But the proximity in shared letters, the most interesting feature is the proximity of, of these words, some of which share letters with each other. Proximity significantly lowers the probability of these words appearing randomly together, or together randomly. But to quantify it precisely, we need to make some assumptions about the chance of such configurations occurring. And then it goes over quite a bit of the math, and its conclusion is the refined p-value is approximately 0 0.001, indicating that the odds of observing these events by random chance are about 1 in 1,000. This suggests that the finding is statistically significant, as the likelihood of such an arrangement happening randomly is quite low. And then, me, I realized after ChatGPT ran the calculations that I had left off one of the words. So ChatGPT ran the odds again, taking the fourth word into consideration, and here is the final estimate, and it is, thus taking into account proximity, shared letters, and the meaningful phrase formed by the words, the combined odds of these words appearing together randomly could reasonably be between 1 in 1,000 and 1 in 2,000. So the conclusion was, the p-value factoring in all the variables is likely in the 1 in 1,000 to 1 in 2,000 range, meaning it is highly unlikely that this combination of words appeared by random chance in your text. Now, as a codes researcher, I find it interesting, but it is certainly not the most compelling code I have ever found. The important thing is what the plain text of Scripture teaches us about the rapture. It's what the plain text teaches us about anything. We need to get back to the Bible. We need to read it. We need to believe it. We need to have confidence in it. It is the Word of God, and it is the truth. Now again, here's the link to one of my articles on the subject, uh, the scriptural evidence for the rapture. Now, you can read the opening of my book, What Happens Next. It includes hundreds of prophecies, past, present, and future. It, it also presents a case for Christianity and the Bible. And I've inclu I'll include the links to the first two chapters below, and you can read them for free at my blog. Now, as always, the purpose of this channel is to give people confidence in the Word of God and to encourage people to read it, to believe it, to follow it, to obey it. I do think time is short. There are so many things that are happening that come straight out of the Bible that are we're fulfilling prophecy at a rate I have never seen since I became a Christian in 1999. And it is, it's hard to keep up with. It's staggering. So, I encourage you to read the Bible, get down on your knees and pray, accept Christ as your Savior. He is the only way to the Father. He is the only way to eternal life. 
He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and you can believe that. Thank you for listening.